you all so i have decided that i will be putting up introductory level lectures on geophysical inversion on this channel i hope you guys will enjoy the lecture and it will be rewarding and beneficial to you all so what basically is geophysical inversion it involves mapping and measuring the subsurface properties such as velocity density magnetic intensity resistivity and identifying the rocks which are below the subsurface which might not be horizontal in always all the cases in fact they might be having fractures they might be inclined they might be having u shape and and we need to basically locate certain kind of anomalies which might be located in the form of pockets as well so for example we might have groundwater we might have some ore we might have some oil or or we might have some fractures which which we need to report before the construction takes place on that place of land sometimes we need to report the hard rock depth which is called as basement rock before the construction starts so if we try to understand broadly speaking this geophysical inversion is one of the last steps which comes into the picture or uh, it this geophysical exploration journey starts with acquisition and planning uh, whereby we plan about which place we are going to acquire the data is it a sedimentary area or is it a hard rock area or is it a glacial area or is it a marshy area and then once we have decided that we try to understand what our target is are we looking for resistive body are we looking for conductive body or are we looking to just map the subsurface and accordingly we choose our methods which can be gravity which can be magnetic which can be seismic which can be resistivity which can be magnetotelluric it also depends upon the depth of investigation which we are looking to 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 go into it can be and there are many different kinds of method where are active and passive methods when we talk about active methods the source is our under control when we talk about passive methods the source is not under our control we look into those aspect later into the lecture once we have acquired the data with the present technology which we have in certain cases in the field during the acquisition itself some processing can be done with a single click and we can see the subsections which to which we can interpret the subsurface in the moment itself whereas in certain cases the data is size is very huge the data which is acquired is having complex physics involved so we need to bring in it into the office whereby we have got high processing systems and computational power whereby we do a lot of processing and then we go to the inversion step so every geophysical method uh, has many frequency filtering steps and this frequency based filtering is because uh, done because in many cases we have got high frequency or data which which might be our data in many cases that high frequency might be noise for us so depending upon that we have got high frequency filters low low pass frequency filters then we have got band pass filters depending upon what kind of signals we are dealing with we are going to define different kind of filters we can talk about that also and very short later in the lectures and once the processing has been done to get rid of the noise or uh, basically we have crisper images we can say when i say crisper images it means the noise has been removed the lines which which you might see here for example in the section the noise will be removed and the sections these overlappings will appear more clearer about the subsurface so for example if you are seeing this anticline sort of structure this this kind of noise will be removed and it will become better after processing next step comes the inversion so basically once we have the data which we have measured from which we have removed the noise then we go for the inversion step which is in itself a a very time taking process so nowadays people are coming up with different techniques to make the process more accurate reliable with less time and less less computational resources in real time so if we try to understand in the form of picture what geophysical inversion is that we have got this measured data set so let's say this so in this case i'm i'm showing you a seismic section and what we do is 
that we assume a subsurface model whereby the subsurface can also have inhomogeneities it can have certain structures it can there can be a u-shaped layer also uh, we can see here there are mountains and there is a water body as well and then we do forward modeling using using the physics so we might be generating electromagnetic waves or seismic waves or gravity waves or um, or any magnetotelluric waves and then we record it uh, and then we generate these kind of sections so basically they are called calculated data and then we try to reduce the misfit between calculated data and the observed data okay so there are many issues when we are trying to reduce this misfit of calculated data and observed data first is non-uniqueness so basically what it means to say is that same data can produce different models so for example we might see a scatter in the subsurface at a particular location which which data will show but at the same time if we shift the scatter to some other location we might see that the data is uh, supporting that the data does not change much with with the change in the location of the scatter scatter in the subsurface so so or we might say that a subsurface velocity of thickness whereby we are, i'm saying that at a 20 meter depth there is a layer of sandstone which is 10 meter thick but same data can be produced with a sandstone at the same depth of 20 meter but a thickness of 20 meter that is also a possibility okay um, so so basically this happens because there is noise in the data and sometimes the equations which we are using here so for example here i have mentioned for forward modeling i'm using the function f for inverse modeling i'm using a function let's say g so both of them might uh, be having oversimplification in in it then there is ill post problem why there is ill post because there might be ch chances that a small change in the input is bringing in a large change in the output so in our case so for example what happens is if i'm changing my data a little bit the subsurface image which i'm getting the subsurface information which i'm getting is changing a lot this might be a case which which happens so in these cases we need certain kind of regularizations we will come to that later on then there is a computational cost so this fmm gd these equations can take matrix form these can form uh, algebraic equations these can form differential equation forms and they are very huge in number so m the model parameter itself is a matrix it 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 is converted into vectors sometimes to make the computations easier but it's really very huge of the order of 10 to the power 5 many a times 10 to the power 9 so in that case we need really uh, a computive intensive units okay and then there is this non-linearity we this no what i mean by this non-linearity when i'm talking in terms of geophysics is that that if i say that i'm bringing a change of plus five in the data the the subsurface information let's say if i'm measuring the velocity that will also change by plus five no it doesn't happen that way and we can actually quantify the non-linearity aspects and accordingly we choose our inversion algorithm which we'll talk about in later in more detail okay how are going how are we dealing with these things first of all we have a prior information uh, so we use regularizations of different methods and we can use constraints also constraints means basically if we know that my density in this particular region is going to have only um, minimum value of this and maximum value of this so i provide a constraint during inversion algorithm so you can say a bound so mathematically it is a bound but geophysically basically we don't want want our our physical properties so for example i don't want my p wave to go um, in negative direction it cannot be below zero it cannot in okay so those kind of things which make sense physically then in many a case the data can be transformed into some other domain so that the problem becomes simpler in some cases the subsurface property can be also transformed in some other domain so that the computational cost is brought down so for example when we do FWI, we do forward modeling of waves, it can be done in time domain as well as frequency domain. Many a times people go for frequency domain forward modeling, 
because it is cheaper and faster with respect to computational aspects. Then once we have the equation of fm equals to d plus n whereby n is the noise and the data. So, so f is a function which we are, we are using physics to model it. So we assume that through processing we have get rid of the noise. So we only have the data. And for solving this fm equals to d, we have got different kinds of mathematical tools. And these tools can be broadly categorized into local and global methods. In local methods, we have Newton, Gauss-Newton and quasi-Newton method. Uh, basically, global methods, we have got main kind of sampling methods, we have got deep learning method, we have got reinforcement learning method. Okay, so when I say local and global, what I mean to say is that if I call this model space in the previous image, this whatever properties of the subsurface, we call it the model, model parameter space. Okay, so this parameter space is really very huge. And when I'm trying to reduce the error between observed and calculated data, it is not a simple U-shaped um, journey whereby I reach the minima at the center of the U. It's very irregular. And for because of that irregularity, and depending upon at where I initialize my solution, I will I will reach a I might reach a local minima or I might reach a global minima. So we are interested always in global minima. So depending upon the non-linearity of the problem and where we stand with respect to our a prior information, we choose the method of local or global. And when I talk about local method, the most uh, rigorously used method is Gauss-Newton method. In Newton method, we use Haitian as well. Which is, which is very computationally intensive to calculate because our model space is itself very huge as we have already talked about. Then Jacobian is already 2D in nature and then Haitian will become 3D in nature. So usually Gauss-Newton is used and Gauss-Newton has two versions of it whereby there is Marquardt-Levenberg method whereby the model is only there then regularized method whereby there are different kind of regularization schemes which can be used. For quasi-Newton method we have got um, uh, basically a preconditional to the decent direction which we get through the gradient and that is basically a uh, Haitian in some sense but it is it is not actual Haitian it is it is something which is calculated through certain assumptions so it is approximated Haitian which is there in quasi Newton for that also we have got three variations there are many variations but we will talk about only three uh, we will in fact talk only about one but at least we should know the name there is Davidon Fletcher Powell method then we have got Broaden Fletcher Goldfarb Shannon algorithm and then we have got limited memory BFGS bounded method okay so the difference between the BFGS and LBFGSB is only in terms of the fact that how the Haitian is getting updated and also the bound so we can it's it's like it's going to care of the constraint which we give it cannot go beyond the constraint the there will be concept of free variable and the normal variable when we come to sampling methods so basically what happens is we the most favorite for all geophysics all time is mcmc that is monte carlo marco chain monte carlo method so the concept is basically that every sample which I pick in my parameter space, the next sample which I'm going to pick up is going to depend upon the previous sample which I have picked. We'll go into its detail later on. But for right now, we just have to understand this, that in MCMC algorithm, the, the parameter, the next parameter which we are going to pick is just dependent on the previous uh, element which we have picked up so when I'm saying parameter space so for example I'm saying that I have got a five layered earth so there will be f and we are inverting for let's say p wave velocity then we have got five uh, dimensional problem right but the thickness of the layers is fixed then we go for MCMC but if I say the thickness can also vary then my problem becomes 10 dimensional and here comes in the trans dimensional whereby I can vary the the thickness as well okay 
the parameters are not fixed they can also vary so i can say that i have got 10 layers at the initial stage and at the end i might end up with only eight layers okay so that's an advantage which trans dimensional gives and then comes the hamiltonian method it is also based on sampling of mcmc only but they use the information of gradient and jacobian to update the samples then we have nature inspired meta heuristic which is in uh, very much fashion today right now hereby we have we can i can name you like whale optimization we have got ant optimization b optimization wolf optimization say these optimization techniques are basically uh, defined by how in nature these animals in groups they behave they survive and they move ahead to maximize their uh, resources in our case we are not trying to maximize anything we want to minimize our loss function so there is a just a change of sign a flip sign negative sign is there then comes the deep learning and reinforcement learning these are the two right now um, growing fields i'll say deep learning is basically uh, requiring the input and output side of data both so that we can train the models and the loss function uh, is defined in such a way that the gradient is updating the model so that we can predict even the subsurface properties from the from the measured data for which we have not even trained the model in reinforcement learning we train the model in such a way that we do not show it the results okay we do not show it what output we want instead we loss is defined in such a way that if it takes a wrong step we penalize it if we take a correct step it goes through it it gives a reward so so we'll go into all details of all of this and much more we'll go with uh, we'll deal with what what kind of method we are going to do when we have got over determined under determined problem and we are also going to discuss a few papers which will help us to understand the application part of the geophysical inversion in coming lectures and i hope you guys enjoy this lecture and this is uh, beneficial to you all thank you